Ki Woman Wala Amaba. Before uh, starting the class, inshallah ta'ala, uh, I would like to see if you have any question. And uh, the most important part of this class is for you to, to have, mashallah, the methodology on how to find the right tafsir. And when we say the right tafsir, there is no one tafsir, you know, because the more you read the book of Allah, uh, the more, subhanAllah, in every, sometimes, you know, uh, at every stage of your life, at every stage of your knowledge, at every, uh, you know, different circumstances, the Qur'an is providing you with different meanings. However, to find, to know the method, uh, to, the method uh, to have the tool how to analyze, where to check, and that's very important. That's, you know, uh, what we want to, uh, inshallah, achieve in this class. Fa so far, uh, alhamdulillah, we, ha we had done the, the topic analysis, and you saw how by just focusing on the topic, uh, you know, you will find, subhanAllah, new gems that really come uh, to us and to you when you read and read again the Qur'an. Uh, also, the analysis, uh, when we say, uh, you know, tafsir, it's more contemplating and pondering on the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, it does not come by one reading, you know. So, for example, we had the opportunity to study uh, the Surah Al-Alaq. We had the opportunity to study Surah Al-Saf, walhamdulillah. And uh, also we studied Surah uh, Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha is more like, uh, you know, more comprehensive, including the topic and the, uh, the tafsir itself. Uh, and uh, we started Surah Al-Qiyamah. And uh, Surah Al-Qiyamah, subhanAllah, the more you dig, uh, you know, dig and in it, you'll find wonders. I mean, uh, then you can understand after analyzing the topic how important that Qasam, so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swear by the Qiyam or swear by any of his creation subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, it helps us to, you know, to know that there is more deep meaning that we uh, just, uh, you know, received or get at the first reading. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa describing those who uh, recite the Qur'an. Uh, he said the one that is difficult for him or for her, Someone who's really hardly, uh, you know, you know, find difficulties to, write, uh, to read the Qur'an. The Prophet Sallallahu that person has double reward. The reward of reading the Qur'an, a reward of striving despite the hardship that uh, one is finding in pronouncing, you know, the words of the Qur'an. But that person does not mean that he cannot, you know, or she cannot ponder on the book of Allah because, you know, they can read the meaning of the Qur'an in the language that they master the best. Um, but when we come to recitation, you know, the other type that the Prophet described describing the same hadith, he said when they come to the end of the Qur'an, they go back. قَالْ أُولَئِكَ مَعَ الْكِرَامِ السَّفَرَةِ you know, safara bara or kiramul barara. So it's like, you know, traveling all the time, like the angels traveling uh, up and coming down to for Allah to fulfill Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands. So those, subhanAllah, the believers that will the Quran, they will be like, you know, kind of travelers, you know, into the book of Allah and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you know, give the parable of the angel al-kiram al-barara. The emphasize on the reading and reading and reading what every time you read you're gonna find the new things when i say new things it's like you know discover something that you should have discovered before no it's going to be a new thing because of the new situation the new life that you you are facing the new life that you're seeing the new, you know, maturity that you are reaching, the new breakthrough that you're making in your life. And the Qur'an, subhanAllah, with you in every aspect of your life, in every stage of your, uh, of your, uh, you know, also your life, uh, and so on. Huh? 
ف وي دونت وونت يو نو وين يوجلي دي التفسير التحليلي يو نو ان دي كلاس دي تيك الصوره بارتيكولار صوره اند دي دو ذا تفسير ذات واي يو نو ان دي كلاس ويل بي سينج يو نو وي شود دو 114 ذن يو نو سيشن اند ايفري سيشن ماي تيك يو نو ديفرنت كلاسز يو نو تو فينيش ذا قران But uh, when we do it in one class, we wanted to do it in a way, how can we learn a method? How can we have tools to help ourselves, insha'Allah, uh, you know, ponder in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, secure the way of our analysis to no go astray, uh, to be, you know, have full humility when we read the book of Allah. When we do not understand, we do not give an interpretation Uh, just you know, uh, uh, you know, just based on our whims, uh, we you know being you know being humble uh, in reading the book of Allah, uh, humble in uh, uh, connecting with the rightest predecessor in whatever they had you know shared by the will of Allah and the the bounty of Allah with us. Uh, so these is very important, inshallah. That's why. We have them here, so in your notes, to have them, the, the, the building a methodology for the tafsir. So the, the first point and the second point, that's need to be present in every, uh, you know, uh, every time you read the book of Allah, you have them to, to have these two, like, embedded in one spirit. Hmm? Uh, compile the ma'thur, this is going to, inshallah, uh, Uh, encourage you, inspire you. It's like recommending you to read. Uh, you know, you can have you know some few pages. When uh, the best thing, uh, personally, you know, my you know uh, so far journey. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to give us all firmness on His path. Uh, whatever I you know read something, you know. I would say, ask question, what the meaning of it? So, you know, long time ago, every time I go, I will not go farther till I know that meaning of that, you know, ayah or that word. So go back, you know, open, for example, Ibn Kathir, open uh, Al-Tabari. Uh, and then you build for yourself, you know, kind first a library, uh, uh, you know, you, you enrich your Quran vocabulary Uh, and and so on. So you becomes like the Quran becomes like very close to you because you get you know very used to its words. Uh, the, even you know later on, anyone who want to be uh, very skilled, inshallah, and advance in the Arabic language, uh, you know, be close to the Quran, make one to be uh, also uh, easy for them to be fluent at least you know in the writing in understanding, in seeing the structure, and so when uh, uh, someone is close from the Qur'an. The reflection, uh, it's, it's, it's very, you know, that's the, the part that we uh, trying, you know, to share with you, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, and to have you, inshallah, to learn it. And it is a practice. It is, comes with more practice, and the practice is just, you know, there is no magic. Uh, you know, it's just practice, read and read and read. And uh, the greatest, you know, let's say, breakthrough comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who, uh, insha'Allah, illuminates your heart to uh, open up horizon of understanding to you, insha'Allah. So these principles are, you know, few of them, but are very important, especially for the, you know, for the for us in our society here and for you know mainly when we present the the class in english because there's other principles that are emphasized on uh, arabic wordings you know uh, it might not be as relevant uh, you know for us as these that we have picked today inshallah ta'ala uh, we want to take the tafsir of uh, the beginning of surah al-baqarah Um, and then we're going to apply the same thing. We're going to apply the same thing, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah. So we're going to take a, a Madani, uh, inshallah, uh, example. Uh, 
uh, and uh, inshallah we'll try to finish today what we had the plan to do from Surah Al-Baqarah. Uh, in Surah Al-Baqarah, inshallah, we're going to go uh, through uh, another, it's the same uh, body of the methodology, the same form, the same body. But uh, sometimes we'll, within this body, we'll take, for example, more time in exploring or analyzing to see how the tafsir, it can be, you know, in few lines as it can be in, in a whole book. You know, that's why you find the book of tafsir of one scholar concise in one volume, the other one in 10 volume, and you find another one in 30 volumes. So it depends how, how much you have at that time to say in that subject, you know. And uh, you might, you know, analyze or explore or like go farther into uh, explaining or going on the side to bring other subjects uh, depends on the reality that you live in, depends on the environment, depends on the issues. So you might come to things you said, uh, this is what, uh, you know, people are, you know, are, are going through, are, you know, asking a question about and so on. Uh, also, uh, we would like to be, you know, the class, if you have a question, uh, I will ask a question to, uh, to be like more interactive so we'll help like, and the inter interactive aspect of the class uh, to help, you know, in the way what the type of the question that we need to ask ourselves uh, when someone is, when we're reading the Quran. Uh, for Surah Al-Baqarah, we can go, inshallah, to the, here. Taib, Surah Al-Baqarah. The, the surah, as you see, is named Al-Baqarah. And Al-Baqarah is the cow. Now, our question is, you remember when we talked about the Qiyamah, we said the Qiyamah is the base, right? Iqra, Al-Alaq, you know, is the name, but truly the knowledge what is the base, the knowledge that leads you to fulfill and achieve the highest objective of your life. Now, when we're talking about the Baqarah, so say, if this surah, this the longest surah in the Quran is named Al-Baqarah. But when we think about it, there is many things that we can talk about, of course. But uh, we, let's say, uh, what should be the first thing to look at to help us find kind of uh, uh, the thread from which we're going to, 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 to have that focus in this, you know, first great surah that the Prophet Sallallahu uh, he said, whoever who carry Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran is like, you know, he's like, he will not be, uh, inshallah, munafiq. And he, you know, described Al-Baqarah Ali Imran, that, that big cloud that come, you know, shading the person who, who has Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran. Hmm? And you can read in Ibn Kathir uh, that you have, uh, you know, uh, many things uh, and uh, many uh, of the bounties of Surah Al-Baqarah. What do you think the first thing that we need to look at to give us that uh, you know that thread to to see in in a way uh, the orientation that we need to focus on. Uh, uh, first, just to share with you uh, that uh, Al Baqarah uh, is Surah Madaniya, so it was revealed in Mad Al Madina. Al Baqarah was revealed, you know, uh, I believe it was completed within nine years or so. You know, we can go to the, you know, to to the reason of revelation and the study of Surah, and you can find all this information very easy. So, Surah Al Baqarah was revealed within nine years. So, almost in the whole Medani period. Uh, the name of Al-Baqarah is the cow, we're talking about an animal. 
Now, the question mark is not about why the surah is in the name of animal first, but uh, let's always remember we said in one of the principles we said the environment. Um, what do we have that here? The environment. The environment in which the surah was revealed. If we think of al-Baqarah as, as an animal, a cow, with the environment in which this surah was revealed, what was the environment? The environment we have, you know, the Medina, in the Medina, it's like, you know, known by its uh, garden of, of trees, palm trees. Uh, the environment of al Medina, uh, what are the animals they live in, in, in the Arab Peninsula, you know, uh, in general are camels, goats, horses. There's no cows. It's not known the cow in the, in the Arab Peninsula. So already the, the longest surah comes, you know, kind of it does not have a relation with the environment. Right, so the environment people wanted, for example, said in the surah named the uh, the camel. Everybody knows what the camel. But to say al-Baqarah is something like you know it's uh, unusual to mention the Baqarah in an environment like the Arab Peninsula. Fa but what, what, you know, let's say, um, when, when there is something like this, what wisdom can we see in it? One of the wisdom, uh, subhanAllah, is to teach the believer to have all enthusiasm to learn. So, for example, you say, you know, uh, someone tell you, like, Bakara, you're not, you don't have, you know, say, you say, why Bakara? Why we don't talk about camels that I see? Instead, you will say, Bakara, yeah, I want to learn about it. So, these two perspectives, a perspective that you block yourself, you don't want to know, because why? You want to be, you know, live among the usual thing that you know. You don't want anything new, because there's that uh, feeling that anything new that I do not know might disturb my path, my way, my peace. I don't want it. And this is, subhanAllah, you find it all the way in the Baqarah, Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the beginning of the first chapter, He said, uh, uh, if you tell them to come and follow the path, we follow what we get used to it. What we find our forefather following. We don't want anything in you. We're good like that. So that subhanAllah, the, to, to free that instant of loving to learn, of instant of uh, that curiosity, to free it is subhanAllah the beginning of the submission. Because someone, when you ask someone to say, I want to talk to you about Islam, he said, thank you, I don't want to hear about this. Thank you very much. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, this is surah's name, for example, it's name Al-Baqarah. He said, Baqarah, no, nah. I don't want to hear about it. Especially like an animal talking about people's wisdom, they talk about big names. Huh? So here I can read, قال, uh, وَهَذِي دَعْوَةٌ لِلْإِسْتِسْلَامِ لِلْتَعْلِيمِ One of its wisdom is like an invitation to surrender, to learn. So it's like he said, like, you know, someone coming to a class uh, and uh, in front of a learned person, knowledgeable person, sit, cross his leg, and he want to listen. I'm the student, talk, I'm hearing. Not someone to argue, why are you talking about this? This is irrelevant, and people, they leave. He said, you didn't even listen. Just from the title, you left. So you see, there is something important here is like how there is that uh, perspective, there is that uh, feeling, uh, that, that mindset with which you're going to enter the Qur'an. Subhanallah. Tfad. 
we didn't come there. We're still in the in the name of Al-Baqarah. This is the first thing because uh, it's unusual to talk about the cow in that such environment. It's like in, an unusual also to talk about camel in, in the middle of Europe. Ah, uh, you're talking about camel, you say, what? you understand. But that's the thing is when they have two, you know, subhanAllah, two mindset. The first mindset is to block, say, I don't want it. Say, why you don't want it? Let's study yourself. Look within yourself. Why you don't want it? Say, I think I'm stubborn. I say, yes. <laughs> you know, stubbornness, it might have, you know, it's the foundation of stubbornness, arrogance. And so on. So arrogance, what it leads to? It leads to kufr, to disbelief, to denial. The mindset, when you tell me something strange, I listen, I want to learn. Show me your evidence, convince me with reason. Then if you're right, I will accept. Actually, I will be happy to accept what you told me, so I'm learning something in you. It's going to help me in my life. So this is the two, subhanAllah, perspective. It's like, you know, when I'll give you a name that is a strange for the environment that you live in, my perspective is say, okay, I want to learn it. And then after you speak, say, this is relevant, this is good, this is insightful, I didn't know that it is, then I'm learning. But if I will say, no, I don't want to hear. So subhanAllah, is like I refused all the good thing in that talk. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith, which is, uh, it's very like by analogy, he said how things they go. Uh, he said, everyone is going to paradise except the one who refuses. This is the mindset. The Prophet Sallallahu invited you to listen. So invite you to listen, why? To go to paradise. If you don't want to listen to the Prophet Sallallahu what it means? That you refuse to go to paradise. Uh, the Baqarah, you know, uh, if you look in the story, so uh, I'm answering the question where we, we need to look at. If you look at the story of the Baqarah here, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the Baqarah, where did he mention it? We're going to go there. Taif. Qala fa'il alladhina yanqudhuna wa'allama wa qunna talaqa taif. أتأمرون الناس بالبر ثم عفونا وإذ أتينا وإذ قلتم طيب طيب آية 267 أمين 2 بقرة 67 آية 67 So the mention of the بقرة which is related to the name of the surah is in Ayah 67 and going up to uh, the story up to almost to uh, 74. Now, when we're going to read the, this part, it's going to help us kind of build a thought and that core or where we're going to emphasize our analysis. So this is going to help us build the objective that we need to learn and inshallah implement in our life. Type I read, and I want you to, to reflect when I'm reading, okay? قَالَ وَإِذْ قَالَ بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَنْ تَذْبَحُوا بَقَرَةً قَالُوا أَتَتَّخِذُنَا هُزُوَا قَالَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ أَنْ أَكُونَ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ طيب And recall When Musa عليه السلام said to his people Indeed Allah commands you to slaughter a cow They said do you take us in ridicule? 
He said, I seek refuge in Allah from being among the ignorant. Look the ayah before it. Allah talking about different subject. Let's add more uh, translation here. didn't this website uh, teach you sub alhamdulillah because we think like these things uh, work you know, uh, flawlessly, like perfectly, always have to do things. Okay, here we go. And remember, Musa said to his people, Allah commands you to sacrifice uh, a cow. He called it Hafer. They said, makes you a laughing stock of us. Um, do you take us in ridicule? Uh, the other one, he said, do you make a game of us? And all of them, this is what the meaning of huzwa. They said, do you make fun of us? Hmm? He said, I take Allah's refuge from being among al-jahilun. Al-jahilin, the ignorant or the foolish one. Now, when we read this ayah, what the question that it comes into your mind? This is the first thing we hear about the cow. So the first thing we're going to say, you know, the first question, why Musa asking them to slaughter a cow? What is this cow about? Right? So we want to know what is this cow. But uh, then you ask yourself, who asked to do such a thing? Musa. Musa, he the messenger of Allah. Then, if Musa, the messenger of Allah, asking me to slaughter a cow, the priority is to fulfill the command or to ask why should I slaughter the cow? What is the priority? To surrender. That was the biggest problem. So here is like they rejected the command of Allah. Because it's like Allah tell you something, said, yeah, Allah convinced me. I will do it. If you don't convince me, I'm not going to do it. Right? So it's like, you know, you know uh, slaughter a cow. Slaughter a cow? It's irrelevant. Taib, I'll give you more uh, insight of the story. Just to, to, to understand, because this is how we enter. We don't know anything. Now, the inside of the story, a, a person was killed among the people of Musa. They investigate that they didn't know the killer. They said, we have the messenger of Allah among us. Let's go first to take the case to him. And he tell us. He might know, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will uncover who the killer. So they came to Musa alayhi salam. He said, messenger of Allah, we have so-and-so get killed. And we do not know not the killer. He said, okay. I will get back to you. When they are waiting, he get back to them. He said, inna Allah recommend you to slaughter a cow. And related. And here, subhanAllah, are you following your messenger? Or do you have a tiba? Or you're not following? Are you trusting your messenger? Do you believe in Allah? Do you believe in your messenger? So this is with reasoning. I'm asking you, you know, we are asking about who's the killer. 
So this is the people, the follower of, uh, of Musa. And you're telling us to slaughter a cow? Are you making fun of us? You understand? Now, if it was anybody else, you can call the, I mean, you go to, uh, for example, to a court or to a police station, tell them we have this and this. He said, okay, we're going to help you find the killer. Go slaughter a cow. They're going to say, you are crazy. I mean, this is, you know, how can you be here in this position? Huh? So this, you know, we need to put it in its, pers in its perspective, right? So if we take it from a normal way, like people like, you know, they are investigated and everything, and you come, tell them, and they tell you, do this. It's very irrelevant. You said, you know, who put you in this position? Are you making fun of us? So the reaction of people, of the follower of Musa, it seems normal in a normal situation. But this is a denial and kufr when the messenger of Allah is telling them that. So what they missed here? They missed that Allah is the all-knowing. They missed that Allah is the all-wise. They missed that the command of Allah is never in vain. They missed all of that. You judge Allah and his messenger on the form, on the appearance of the command without looking at the greatness of Allah, the one that you inquire from him subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the solution so you see subhanallah we think that we know but when it comes with allah subhanahu how much you know in front of the knowledge of allah how much do we know when a messenger telling you to do things so you see how deep is the word of al-baqarah in surah al-baqarah he said, Yahi, this is haram, don't eat it. He said, why? He said, you are acting exactly like these people, the follower of Musa. So when you say why, it's subhanAllah, is like you are not trusting the one who created you. Not trusting the messenger that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent. Therefore, you negate your own, you know, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, simply. So he answered them, Allah save me from being an ignorant. I mean, Musa alayhi salam telling you, to, I mean, it appeared to you irrelevant. It does not make sense. But if you do obey, if you do obey, you're going to see the light in your path. And then you'll be patient to learn because he's a messenger of Allah, he's telling you that. When Musa alayhi salam said, Qala, a'udhu billahi an akuna min al jahilin. Then they said, like, you know, kind of forced, not truly submitted, not truly convinced. Ad'u lana rabbaka yubayil lana mahi. Okay. Call upon your Lord for us that he may make plain to us what it is. You see, subhanAllah, how they rebelling, even now submitting, but subhanAllah, not fully not willingly, it's like unwillingly. It's like, you know, we respect our messenger. Okay, tell us what this type of cow. So what happened, subhanAllah? Look what Musa alayhi salam said. قَالَ إِنَّهُ يَقُولُ إِنَّهَا بَقَرَةٌ لَا ثَارِضٌ وَلَا بِكْرٌ عَوَانٌ بَيْنَ ذَلِكَ فَافْعَلُوا مَا تُؤْمَرُونَ He says, very little a cow, neither too old nor too young, but it is between the two conditions, so do what you are commanded. If uh, when the description of Musa alayhi salam does reflect a specific cow or any cow, is almost any cow. Not too old, not too young. So which is what we have the Dabiha when you go in the uh, for those, you know, sacrifice, offer the sacrifice, the qurbani or the dabiha in the Eid. 
Do they have a problem finding the bih? Huh? But you know, it's not too old, it's not too, uh, too, too young, because the young is a baby, you don't even think about it. The too old, is that the one that, you know, even when you're going to offer the meat, you're going to take like, you know, 10 hours to cook the meat. <laughs> and it is not the bih. So, you know, to offer something, so it's like by nature, when you're going out to buy something, you sacrifice, you're going to buy what Musa salam said, and you don't have any difficulties. So subhanAllah, look, look the mentality of those who do not surrender, for those who are not convinced, or those who are rebelling against the way of Allah. SubhanAllah, the crookedness in thinking starts by rebelling against the command of Allah. It's very clear. They said, call upon, uh, call upon your Lord for us to make it plain to us its color. Allah they didn't ask you for any color. Why are you asking for the color? Because subhanAllah, that uh, disease of crookedness was started with that rebel, make them to be, you know, tough on themselves. Because if you don't surrender from the beginning, you're going to make the path very difficult for your life. All your journey of your life is going to be all difficulties. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa ma kanu every ayah, every part of the ayah, when he's talking about these people, he said, we never have transgressed them, they only transgress themselves. So in the story of Al-Baqarah, you'll have the whole story of the deviation and the rebelling of the follower of Musa, and reminder and admonishing the follower of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Because the whole surah, it's, you know, kind of uh, uh, reflection, you know, or details or steps or like, you know, all what is required from us as a believer. And going back, it's spirit to the, say, to the story of Al-Baqarah. So you see now how uh, we have more understanding how the name of Al-Baqarah, how important for this soul. طيب قالوا ادعوا لنا ربك يبين لنا ما لونها. فالله سبحانه وتعالى said to Musa, now when Allah gave you something that easy and you are by your deviation asking for the color, then it's going to be difficult for you now. So the answer comes based on one's heart, based on one's soul, based on one thinking. And it is, subhanAllah, in our life, the more you one make it difficult uh, on his self, on herself, in choices, in, in, in many things, in planning, in projecting, the more difficulties they find in achieving those projects. Even things like un, unrelated with, with, with the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tayyip. Qala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he answered them, uh, the meaning of it, he said, it's a yellow cow, bright in its color, pleasing to the beholders. Uh, a a fun-colored heifer, pure and rich in tone, the admiration of the beholders. Um, the other one, he said, uh, it's a yellow cow, bright in color, pleasing to the observers. This is really very difficult sharia. <laughs> you know, yellow for the animal is like pale. And the pale, it's not rich and it's not pleasing. I mean, usually people, when he's pale, he said, are you sick? Right when his face is pale, he said, are you sick? But this is, subhanAllah, is difficult. This yellow, so it's not that pale that looks sick. Rich, 
And when you look at it, you feel good, pleasing to the observers. So you need to bring someone skilled, maybe in the language of today, an artist, to tell you which color that it's meant in this area. <laughs> Subhanallah, they could not find this color. Now, the, the request was to find the killer. They went off the path to become searching for a cow. I want you to reflect on this. Your concern is to get to the path to the pleasure of Allah. We get, subhanAllah, distracted and go finding things and we think that we're doing great when we are very far from the main objective. And we convince ourselves that we are in the good path. So these people, you know, like everybody, like the whole community looking for a cow, specific cow. It's like, uh, they, you know, they're meeting, not about, they forget about the one who died. They're meeting, ah, did you find the cow? We want this region. No, this, this is not looked. So it becomes like, imagine people, community, elders, think they're talking about the cow. It's really they ridicule themselves. <laughs> then, قَالُوا ادْعُوا لَنَا رَبَّكَ يُبَيِّلْ لَنَا مَا هِيَ إِنَّ الْبَقَرَةَ شَابَهَ عَلَيْهِ This color is difficult to discern from these all cows. They said, call upon your Lord to make clear to us what it is. Indeed, all cows look alike to us. <laughs> And indeed, if Allah wills, we'll be guided. So, subhanAllah. When they came to that, uh, you know, weak point, when they came to the limit of their knowledge, to the limit of their stubbornness, to the limit of their, subhanAllah, uh, you know, re rebelling, if you can say, that's when they surrendered. Because they know that there is no solution except when you find the cow. That's when they said, Insha'Allahu la muhtadun. If they have said it in the beginning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have guided them. So the Insha'Allah la muhtadun, it was the keys to have the answer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered, okay, so if you ask in Allah's will to be guided, and hear the whole description of the cow. قال إنها بقرة لا ذلول تثير الأرض ولا تسقي الحرث مسلمة لا شيء فيها. Exactly. So he said, he said it's a cow neither trained to plow the earth nor to irrigate the field, one free from fault with no spot upon her. Uh, now he described, I mean, تثير الأرض ولا تسقي الحرث. Um, there's another meaning of it, which is, uh, let's say, uh, sound having no other color. Uh, it's a cow neither trained to till the soil nor water the fields. Sound having no other colors. So this cow, it's, it's really like uh, the owner of this cow. He has this cow like a pet. So it's not a cow to work. Is a cow, subhanAllah, free, and the owner of the cow, he had it from an orphan, he has it from, uh, you know, as, uh, as inheritance, from his inheritance, and he keep this cow, you know, having, you know, kind of a bond with this cow. So when they came and they found, they knew the cow they're talking about. They said, there's only one cow, because all the cows, they use it to train, as they say, to plow the earth and to water. But this cow is not doing anything. Now we know who the one that you're talking about. So when they went to the person to get the cow, they said, no, I'm not going to sell it. Because the cow is like very close to his heart. It's not like a cow, you know, as like for work. Because he said, okay, I'll buy it, and he can buy two other cows. But this is a special cow for him. 
So subhanAllah, in some of the book of the Tafsir, that he accepted to sell it by its weight in gold. The weight of the cow in gold. <laughs> in some of the narration of the book. Now, if you try to summarize the story in your mind, from any cow to a cow that costs its weight in gold. That's how we lose in our life if we do not submit in Allah. Yeah. And it is unrelated from our journey, actually. Tayyib, here in the Ayah 72, we understand the story. So you, the believer, when you read the story, you submit, you want to learn. You remember Baqarah, I want to learn. I said, what this is? So you submit, you're going to learn. So here you understand the deep wisdom behind it. So the Baqarah was a test. Nothing have to do with the, with the whole incident. What was going to happen? Is a test of submission or not. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and remember when you, uh, here, recall when you slew a man and disputed over it. This is the story I told you about. And remember when you killed a man and fell into dispute among yourself as to the crime. But Allah brought forth that which you were hiding. How? After they slaughter, take any part of the cow and hit the dead person. He's going to come alive. They hit the dead person. This person, subhanAllah, Allah sent life in this person. He stood up. He said, this is my killer. And he died. <laughs> he pointed to his killer. It was one of member of his family, by the way. Look, subhanAllah, the story of the Baqarah comes to give us this great lesson. Look, Allah subhanAllah, he said, قال, uh, Thus, Allah brings the dead to life and shows you his proofs so that you may understand. So it was a test, a trial of understanding, of learning, of gaining wisdom. And we said, strike the body with a piece of the cow. Strike him, the dead man, with a piece of, of it, the cow. The result of such a thing, of rebelling, of uh, subhanallah uh, disputing, uh, of resisting to the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to lose the understanding, is to lose to gain the wisdom, is to lose subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closeness, Allah's trust, Allah's reliance, uh, reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All this element leads to what? To the Therefore, your heart hardened. They became, subhanAllah, they became قال, hardened after that, being like stones or even harder. For indeed, there are stones from which weavers burst forth. And there are some of them that split open and water comes out. And there are some of them that fall down for fear of Allah. These stones melt from the fear of Allah. This stone life come from it. But the heart of these people who resist to submit, they become hardened at those stones, which is mean no life can come from this, from this, uh, you know, hearts. Which is, take us to one point. Allah talking about this heart. Then the beginning of the Surah Al-Baqarah is going to present to you the type of the hearts. 
and how every heart is going to take his journey. The believer, the disbeliever, the hypocrite. See, subhanAllah, everything is connected. Now, I want to hear from you, if you summarize this, what will be the point to emphasize, you know, uh, you know, emphasize on in you reading the Baqarah. The story of the Baqarah, it has all these gems to help you focus on the main topic that is going to guide you through the Baqarah. So if you take the Baqarah, there's the first chapter talking about the uh, Bani Israel and their relation with Musa and their, how they rebel and what they did. So we have people who entrusted the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they did, how they carry their message, how they carry their trust and how they, you know, uh, you know, show shortcoming. Some of them, they betrayed the trust and all of that, what it had resulted to. The second chapter start by, you know, giving the identity of the believer by giving them the qibla to the Kaaba. So here we're going to come to the believers. And the first thing is like the Kaaba would see the submission to Allah and give you this identity and go subhanAllah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and said, O oh, you who believe, enter in Islam as a whole. Ya ayyuladina amanu dhkhulu fi silmi kafa. Now you know what it means, Islam. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about al-siyam, and then talked about the hajj, and then talked about al-qital, and then talked about the zakat, and talked about the infaq, and talked about the money, and then the end of the surah ended by to call the believer to not behave like the people of the Baqarah. وَقَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ Whatever you say, Ya Allah, we know now that everything you say is all knowledge, is all wisdom, is all justice. <laughs> uh, any comment or question? So what are the main, uh, you know, points that we need to emphasize on? The first one is the meaning of surrendering to Allah. Right? Al-Istislamu lillah. How, what the meaning to surrender to Allah? From Surah Al-Baqarah we know it. To surrender to Allah, you need first to know Allah. Look, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qital, he said, uh, you know, you might like something that is bad for you and you might hate something that is good for you and Allah knows and you do not know. Allah the all know, so whatever is inflicted on me, I know inshallah is good because Allah knows. I choose something, I'm making dua, I'm being making dua, Ya Allah give me this, Ya Allah give me this, I never get it. So Allah, I remember, Allah knows. So what I like, it's indeed bad for me. That's why Allah didn't want me to have it. So I know Allah. I know Allah is the all wise. So there's wisdom in the thing. Why I'm not, you know, uh, succeeding in the thing that I want. I've been doing it this for a long time. Say, so there's the wisdom that I'm missing here. Not people who say, like, if you go to the other side, you know, uh, why? I mean, why me? Why everybody is doing this, you know? I mean, I don't want to. But well, like some people, sometimes they say messages, send messages, you know, some questions. I don't know if I can share with you this, but you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. Exactly, Allah is exactly what describing in Surah Bak. For example, saying, look, all the bad people, they have everything. And me, I'm being doing all this. I'm being praying. I'm being given sadaqah, visiting the sick. But always, I'm you know, uh, you know, uh, living in misery. I don't have anything. 
and people they want you to answer them you know but this is subhanallah is the story of the bakhara simply whoever who say that to say truly you didn't believe in allah or you believed in allah uh, in, or you believe in a God that you define the attribute of a God, this God, according to yourself. So you're not worshipping Allah, you're worshipping a God that you invent. So I said, you know, someone said, oh, Alhamdulillah, I'm Muslim. But you say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not good for me. Astaghfirullah. Say, why? Because, you know, I'm being miserable, being asked in dua, I'm still poor, things. He said, you're not worshipping Allah. You worship a God that you define for yourself. You said, I want a God, the God of worship, he's going to make me rich, he's going to make me happy, he's going to give me everything I want. You said, this is not Allah, this is another God. You call him Allah, but this is in your mind, what you're defining is not Allah. What the difference between us and the other faith? Is it the concept of God? They said, we believe all in God. Yes, we believe in God as the creator of the heaven and the earth, but you believe in God, the different in the way that we believe in. The God, the way that you define is not the God of uh, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, we cannot say to a person who does not know Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regards him and he loves him, you know, <laughs> because we don't know. But someone who goes through a lot, really, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, whatever is inflicted in, on you or us, it's because of us. So we invite person, people say, you, the only way to know what's going on in your life is to be patient, humble, and looking within yourself. Because we do things in our life, thinking they are right. Why? Because the way we understand it, we way they perceive it is wrong. So these people, they're engaging themselves in a field that they should not be in it at all. And of course, they're going to go through a lot of problems. So, when they are in the problem, they look to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't look at themselves. So if someone say, help yourself to be patient, by being patient, you're going to learn to be humble. By being humble, you're going to understand your mistakes. You're going to make the right dua. People, they make qiyam layl the whole night because, for example, or for example, a particular job. That particular job they loved, they dream of, is bad for them, for example. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants rahmah for them, he will never give them that job. This person, all his dream, all his objective, he subhanallah make happiness, the whole happiness in being admitted in this job. Therefore, he's going to live misery, he's going to live hardship, He's going to live like depression. He's going to lead to all this problem. Why? Because he's not serving Allah. He's really become worshipping this goal that he had in his life. So people say like, you know, many people, they get mad if you tell them that. But, you know, that's the reality. That's the truth. That's the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qala wa ma rabbuka bi dhallam al abid never Allah transgress anyone never never and if anyone think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not dealing or you know or you know want to Allah want for this purpose to go through his difficulties he's really not only they that does not know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but in the same time, insulting Allah. Allah give you life. It's like 
people, if you put them in, in, you know, put them in other words, the word people, these people, they behave. You say, you know what you're saying? You're saying like Allah created you and he enjoy, you know, seeing you in difficulties. That's the meaning of it. But may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the favor and the gift of understanding. Allah said it in Surah An-Nisa. قَالَ مَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ سَيِّئَةٍ فَمِنْ نَفْسِكَ Whatever good, uh, you know, befall on you is from Allah. Whatever uh, سيئة, evil thing, bad thing you go through is from yourself. We design our own destiny. You design your own destiny. Whatever choice you make is going to result on many, you know, uh, on many things. And that's subhanAllah, whatever you have cho you know, uh, decided is going to uh, result into many destinies because the destiny changes at every time at every moment that's why uh, the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam someone did something wrong that something wrong resulted into a destiny of an evil thing is going to be inflicted on this person this evil thing takes its journey, it's coming down to hit this person. In the meanwhile, that person has regret and ask Allah, repented, and he make dua. The dua, subhanAllah, goes up and stops that evil thing. The evil push and the dua push. He said the Prophet Sallallahu to give it the image is like to the day of judgment. So if someone didn't make that dua, that evil already been inflicted on that person. So, whatever happened to us in our life, it's because of what we have made. Whatever difficulty befall on you is based or because of what you have gained your own self. And he said, remember, Allah forgives a lot. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taking consider all of what you have done, nobody can even leave home, you know, because they might not even be able to walk from all the difficulties that befall on them. You have another question? For for I'm sorry? Well, this life is a trial. If we look at the trial as, you know, the end of our life or the trial define our life, that's the, the problem. That's the, the problem of the perception here. Because the trial, subhanAllah, everyone goes through trial in his life. And this trial, it might be happened because of circumstances, of things that, these parents they had, or this child had, or subhanAllah, uh, a dua that they made. Wallahi, we don't know. But when we make this trial which defines the life, that's the problem. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the vision of the Quran and the vision of our Iman. Allah didn't create it as to live, to have, you know, uh, happiness in this life. To really you know, enjoy, I mean, Allah give us, promise us the joy, which is the ease, the, 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 the peace inside. That the true life, it's not here. So, if true believer look at his kid who's, you know, sick, and see it, subhanAllah, as the greatest endeavor that these parents have to take care of this kid. To truly love them despite all these, you know, 
problem that they go through. To be patient because the problem is how we approach, how we apprehend things, how we conceive it. It's not about it because if someone accepts a sick child, they give them their love. They get used to it. It becomes something normal. So in our life as a human being, what is hurt is always that uh, what we call a crisis. Crisis is the change of habit. If you get the habit to learn, this is my situation. You can read about many people who get, for example, accident. People, they lost their legs. When they embrace their new situation and it becomes their new life, they become happy people. So it is about, subhanAllah, how to approach it how to think about it, how to perceive it. It's not a problem. It is our situation. Someone who's born blind, we said, subhanAllah, Allah punish him. Maybe that blind person, you know, he's going to be the closest to Allah in the Day of Judgment. And that's for eternity. It's not like for uh, 50 years or 60 years or 100 years. And that is, subhanAllah, what we, uh, our people are missing in their vision. They look at the trial defining their life. And our life is not defined by like single or two or three tribes. Yeah. So the focus that we're going to say, Islam, like the surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and we have a taste of the meaning of the surrendering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to trust the wisdom and the knowledge of Allah, because He is Allah. So do not look at the content of the command. Look at the commander. Who the one who commanded you? Example. When Ibrahim alayhi salam saw in the dream that he's slaughtering his son, did Ibrahim saw the slaughtering a punishment? Did Ibrahim saw the slaughter is like a trial that like is, is like painful test? Or Ibrahim saw that this action as a rahmah from Allah? You see, this is can answer uh, your question. This is the example of Ibrahim can answer also the question we've been talking about. I mean, can you imagine a father and a mother, they have like an order to slaughter their son, to kill their kid. Or if someone will do it, subhanAllah, I don't think he will have the taste of life after that. What life? Talking about caring, loving parents, believers, writers. Ibrahim, the order of Allah, didn't see it. As a punishment, of course, he saw it as a rahmah from Allah. Why? Because look at the hukum of Allah, not at the content of the hukum, at the one who gave you the command. The one who gave the command, he is the most merciful, then his command must be mercy. That's it. And that is the, the battle within, if we can call it. I see it, something hurtful, but who told you to do it? The most merciful. Then I need to reset my emotion, my feeling to say, no, this is then is mercy because it's from Allah. And that is the meaning of Islam, by the way. It's not just to simply say, la ilaha illallah. Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's like, how can we really believe that Allah is the most merciful? Despite what I'm going through, it's, it's not, it's painful. So reset the emotion to be, you know, submitted to the knowledge. I mean, you make it to reset, to submit to Allah by learning, by understanding. So the first thing, Islam, and the Islam, the way that we have said, is by learning, 
by better understanding the greatness of Allah, the wisdom of Allah, the mercy of Allah, and we say, the, I know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful, but how you approach it, how you live in your life, how you implement in your life, your belief in Allah being the merciful, your belief in Allah being the provider, your belief in Allah being al qayyum You know, one of the scholars, it's, this is really, you know, uh, harsh, harsh in a good way, harsh to, to shake us. He said, whoever doubting about the provision, people are complaining all the time, he's doubting about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's doubting about the attribute, the name of Allah being al qayyum He said, Allah holding the heaven and the earth and Tazula. And you are scared and bewildered and confused because of few bites. In Hadith Qudsi, he said, you know, Abdi, my servant, are you concerned, are you doubting that I will provide for you few bites? You didn't see how I'm taking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustaining the whole universe. So you see, sometimes people, they complain, but they do not reflect on how, you know, uh, you know, harsh and deep this complaint or like, you know, what's the, the, the deep meaning of it. Every complaint in things is like we are putting in question some of the attributes of Allah. And that's why we need to have that trust in Allah, more learning about Allah, more knowing Allah to help us be better in our submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the heart of the of the story of al-Baqarah so we know subhanallah that the Baqarah is when you, you hear the story uh, uh, the name of al-Baqarah you remember the story of the Baqarah and you remember the last three ayah in Surah al-Baqarah that Allah gifted the Prophet with it was very specific to this Ummah you know to Surah Al-Fatiha and the last three ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah. Now we have the orientation. So, subhanAllah, the, the first surah in the Quran after Surah Al-Fatiha to be its main subject to understand and to learn the element or the deep element of the submission to Allah. And that deep element help you to be successful. Help you to make the CM in its, you know, founded way. So the CM is going to give your heart more light. The Hajj and uh, all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Zakat and all of it. So you have the foundation and then you're building, you are rising a great structure of, of light, of, uh, of someone determined, sincere, righteous, all subhanAllah in Surah Al-Baqarah. All the ahkam came in the, almost in the chapter, uh, starting in the second chapter. Of Surah Al-Baqarah, second uh, juz. Uh, the the second uh, juz say start say qulu sufaha min al-asma wa lahum an qiblatihim. Start to dispute with the people of the who doubting them on their identity by turning to the qibla. Right. And then after that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala talk about the safa wa marwa as a way of trusting and relying on Allah as a uh, say the Hajr. Did. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about, you know, the uh, the hub of Allah, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And equal, they love them as the love of Allah. However, the believer, the true, the true in love to Allah are the believers. Then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the definition of righteousness, ليس البرة. And to walluju is not like piety just to like like a form to turn to the east or the west. The piety is belief, is action, is sabr, is striving. 
And after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started about some, you know, uh, you know uh, issue of ahkam, uh, of uh, qasas, as like a community, and then of inheritance as a family, and then come to the way how to renew your oath in every year through the fasting, la'allakum tattaqun. And then after the taqwa of the CM, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about also some issue in the community about the bribing and things and some misunderstanding, misconception, some how to free the community from its old culture. They used to come the hajj and they say people in the year of the hajj, they come, they enter the house from the back. He said, what are you doing? So in that part is like a cleansing and restructuring and purifying the concept. And then comes to when you go into the battle to also that, uh, uh, you know, the background that they have in the Jahiliya is like just to go fight for what? Just fight, you know, just to show that you are the, the, the bully people, the, the great people to, to steal. No, no, this is do it in the sake of Allah and do not transgress. And then after that comes the Hajj, where you're going to complete your Islam. And then after that, subhanAllah, it comes to give you some of the people who are even in the Hajj, they're still talking about their fathers and everything. He said, do from those like the people said, oh Allah, give us in this the dunya good and in the akhirah good and shield us from the hellfire, setting the right high objectives. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, there's some of the people, they still telling you things and you like their speech, but they have perversity in their heart. But there's people who they give everything for Allah. Then he said, all you who believe enter like this person that I have mentioned in Islam completely. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about that, about al-qital, al-jihad, which is comes the peak of Islam. Because you have the salat, the qibla, eh? And you have, uh, after that, uh, you know, they have the Islam in the beginning of the surah. Then you have the salat, and comes the ibadat, and the hajj, ibadat, salat, siyam, and hajj, and come the peak of Islam, which to hold the structure of Islam, is the jihad. So, qala wa qatilu fi sabilillah. She is very structured, subhanAllah. And after the qital, enter, subhanAllah, to the, back to the cell, which is the family. You're going to have conflict and everything, but have conflict and solve this conflict in justice. When you're going to have separation or like with women, and subhanAllah, in this, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave, uh, restored back the right to the woman, as has been, you know, there is no right in the time of Jahiliya. Now we have the woman to say, you know, I want to, to, to have my right of separation. Allah mentioned it in Surah Al-Baqarah of Al-Khula. She wanted to say, I want to separate. And he said, when she came to her end of the uh, period to leave the house, you, you don't have the right to tell her, no, stay one year. Ah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us back to reflection to have the story of Ibrahim and the story Actually, this whole journey ended with Ayat al-Kursi. And after Ayat al-Kursi, Allah give you the, to, to link you back with your high objective, with your, your life, which is start to talk to you about uh, coming back to life. So the story of the people who left their home scared and everything, they died in the way, and Allah brought them back to life. The story of Uzair who lived, you know, he died for a hundred years and back, back to life. And then the story of Ibrahim, he wants to have his heart fully in peace by seeing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings back things to life. Then you settle your iman secure. Now you are ready to share what Allah gave you. Comes to the infaq. And then the longest ayah in the Quran is about the dain. So the problem of your life is going to be coming from the money. And before that, it was the last ayah in the Qur'an, and fear the day you come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then ended with the most beautiful three ayat, Sami'na wa atana. This is the whole Surah Al-Baqarah.
and is all about the element of Islam to complete your devotion, submission to Allah and to have a successful journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when you look at it, you go back, why it's named Al-Baqara? Oh yeah, because that story, and that story is the whole spirit of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you, inshallah, to emphasize when you are studying the surah. So you're learning. Every part of the surah, you're learning. You're not reading, you're learning. When you read the siyam, how I have to do my siyam. When you read about the hajj, how I have to do my hajj. When you read about all the aspect of the Islam. When it comes to the family, you feel like the, how just it is. How they, you know, they concert. Even, you know, how to, how do, to take care of the there's between them a child, you know, who going to feed the child. He said, you can do this. By, you know, agreement between them. They are divorced. Agreement between them and tashawr, consulting. All of that, subhanAllah, how to, to cleanse, you know, or like the, the foundation of fiqh al huh? Any question? Huh? Nine years. طيب ال uh, we'll take a break yeah. my question <laughs> should I give you now the question it's good I mean while in your break think of the uh, of this question what the meaning of Elif Lam Mim uh, not the meaning of it because we don't know its meaning. I mean, not we don't know its meaning. We, don't, we cannot say Elif Lamim, for example, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, cow. What is the cow? Al-Baqarah is the Baqarah, is the cow. That you know. So you can define it. What is the light? The light is. Elif Lamim is. There's no such a thing. What is the wisdom to have a disconnected letter in the beginning of a surah? Not in the, any surah. This is the first of the Quran, the beginning of the Quran. Think of what we have said about the environment, about the cow, and uh, think of uh, more learning, understanding, educational perspective. Because when he said, I want to know what is Elif Lamim, he said, Do you really want to know if you know what is Elif Lamim? is going to help you in your journey or to understand its wisdom, why it's there. So I'll give you the break, inshallah, and while you're in the break, reflect on this question, inshallah. Uh, Fifteen minutes or more? Fifteen minutes is good? Time. 